HVAC, how to size and design. Ducks, basic part, 3. Duct classification. Ducts are classified in terms of velocity and pressure. One low velocity systems, they are characterized by air velocities up to 2000 FPM. Two medium velocity systems, they are characterized by air velocities in the range of 2000 to 2500 FPM. Three high velocity systems, they are characterized by air velocities greater than 2500 FPM. The low velocity system is used in most air conditioning installations because it is quieter, has lower friction losses, lower fan power, and lower air leakage. High duct velocities result in lower initial costs but require increased fan static pressures, therefore, resulting in increased operating costs. Often these need additional noise attenuation, use of noise silencers, and are not suitable for comfort. Applications Generally, high velocity systems are applicable to large multi story buildings, primarily. Because the advantage of savings in duct shafts and floor-to-floor -floor heights is more substantial. Small two- and three-story buildings are normally low velocity. A velocity of 1000 to 1500 FPM for main ducts and a velocity of 700 to 1000 FPM for the branch. Takeoffs are recommended. Pressure classification. Duct systems are also divided into three pressure classifications, matching the way. Supply fans are classified. One low pressure. Two medium pressure. Three high pressure. One low pressure, the term low pressure applies to systems with fan static. Pressures less than 3 inches WC. Generally, duct velocities are less than 1500 FPM. To medium pressure, the term medium pressure applies to systems with fan static pressures between 3 to 6 inches WC. Generally, duct velocities are less than or equal to 2500 FPM. 3 high pressure, the term high pressure applies to systems with fan static pressures between 6 to 10 inches WC. Usually the static pressure is limited FO a maximum of 7 inches WC, and duct velocities are limited to 4000 FPM. Systems requiring pressures more than 7 inches WC are normally unwarranted and could result in very high operating costs. General good engineering practices are 1. Use of medium pressure classification for primary air duct work, fan connections, risers, and main distribution ducts. 2. Use of low pressure classification for secondary air duct work, run out slash branches from main to terminal boxes and distribution devices. 3.3 Velocity Classification versus Pressure Classification One duct pressure classification influences the duct strength, deflection, and air leakage. Two duct velocity classification influences noise, vibration, friction losses, and fan power. 4.0 Duct Shapes Ducts commonly used for carrying air are of round, square, or rectangular shape. All have advantages and disadvantages, and find applications where one is definitely superior to the other. 4.1 Round Ducts The duct shape that is the most efficient, offers the least resistance, in conveying moving air is a round duct, because it has the greatest cross-sectional area and a minimum contact surface. In other words, it uses less material compared to square or rectangular ducts for the same volume of air handled. An 18-inch diameter duct, for example, has the same air carrying capacity as a 26x11 rectangular duct. The round duct has a cross-sectional area of 254.5 square in and a perimeter of 4.7 feet, 
while the rectangular duct has a 286 square in area and a perimeter of 6.2 feet the rectangular duct thus has 32% more metal in it and would cost proportionately more. Also the insulation, supports and labor are higher for rectangular ducts of similar capacity. Some of the advantages of round duct work include Round shape results in lower pressure drops, thereby requiring less fan horsepower to move the air and, consequently, smaller equipment. Round shape also has less surface area and requires less insulation when externally wrapped. Round ducts are available in longer lengths than rectangular ducts, thereby eliminating costly field joints. Spiral lock seams add rigidity, therefore, Spiral ducts can be fabricated using lighter gauges than longitudinal seam ducts. Spiral ducts leak less and can be more easily sealed compared to rectangular ducts. The acoustic performance of round and oval ducts is superior because their curved surfaces allow less breakout noise. The low frequency sound is well contained in round ducts. Round ducts can help promote healthier indoor environments. Less surface area, no corners, and better airflow reduce the chance of dirt and grime accumulating inside the duct and, therefore, becoming a breeding ground for bacterial growth. While round air ducts have great advantages, there are some disadvantages to them. One of the most notable drawbacks of round air ducts is that they need more clear height for installation. If the net clear height of a furred space above a suspended ceiling is 14 inches, an 18 in diameter duct cannot be installed therein, however, its equivalent 26 x 11 rectangular duct will fit the space easily. A combination of a rectangular plenum and round branches sometimes is a good compromise. 4.2 Rectangular Ducts Square or rectangular ducts fit better to building construction. They fit above ceilings and into walls, and they are much easier to install between joists and studs. When rectangular ducts must be used due to space limitations, keep the width to height ratio, aspect ratio, low. A rectangular duct section with an aspect ratio close to 1 yields the most efficient rectangular duct shape in terms of conveying air. A duct with an aspect ratio above 4 is much less efficient in use of material and experiences great pressure losses. Aspect ratios of 2 to 3 are ideal in trading off added duct cost of material and fan energy for headroom savings. Disadvantages of rectangular ducts are as follows. 1. They create higher pressure drop. 2. They use more pounds of metal for the same airflow rate as round ducts. 3. Their joint length is limited to the sheet width stocked by the contractor. 4. Their joints are more difficult to seal. 5. Those with high aspect ratio can transmit excessive noise if not properly supported. 4.3 Oval Ducts Flat oval ducts have smaller height requirements than round ducts and retain most of the advantages of the round ducts. However, fittings for flat oval ducts are difficult to fabricate or modify in the field. Other disadvantages include one difficulty of handling and shipping larger sizes. Two tendency of these ducts to become more round under pressure, and three in large aspect ratios, difficulties of assembling oval slip joints. 4.4 equivalent diameter. Since both round and rectangular ducts are extensively used in air conditioning systems, it is quite possible that a contractor may wish to substitute one for the other while working on new construction or modifying an existing system. With this likelihood, there is the general tendency to substitute cross-sectional areas of round and rectangular ducts. This is improper and will affect air distribution system performance. Therefore, it is necessary for the HVAC designer to fully understand the conditions under which round and rectangular ducts can be interchanged. The important thing is the duct pressure drop and that's where the concept of equivalent diameter comes into picture. By definition, equivalent diameter, deck, is the diameter of a circular duct that will give the same pressure drop at the same airflow as the rectangular duct. From Oshri Fundamentals Handbook, the following equations may be used to convert rectangular and flat oval ducts to and from round.
where P equals perimeter of oval duct, in A equals cross-sectional area, square in A equals length of major axis, in B equals length of minor axis, in Equivalent diameter versus equivalent cross-sectional area approach. Consider an airflow rate of 7,500 CFM and compare a 30 diameter round duct to equivalent rectangular and oval duct options. Equivalent diameter approach. For a given round duct diameter, 30 inches, the dimensions for rectangular and flat oval ducts must be solved for by trial and error. Fix one dimension and substitute in the equations above. Let's use 16 inches for the minor axis, then the equivalent rectangular duct dimension will be 16 x 51, and flat oval ducts with a 16 inches. Minor axis will be 16 x 53. What this means is that all three ducts, 30 round, 16 x 51 rectangular, and 16 x 53 flat oval will have the same friction loss for a given CFM. The table below summarizes the equivalent diameter approach. From the analysis above, all three ducts have the same friction loss factors because they are equivalent, in terms of pressure drop per unit length. Note that the cross-sectional areas of the rectangular and oval ducts will always be larger than that of the round duct with the same equivalent diameter. Equivalent cross-sectional area approach. Let's see what happens when using an equivalent cross-sectional area approach. Diameter of duct equals 30 inches or 2.5 feet. Cross-sectional area of the 30-inch diameter duct equals 3.14 asterisk 2.5 asterisk 2.5 slash 4 equals 4.91 square foot. Cross-section area of rectangular duct. A equals A asterisk B. Fixing minor axis B as 16 inches. Major axis A will be equals 4.91 asterisk 144 slash 16 equals 44.2 inches. Cross-sectional area of oval duct. Fixing minor axis B as 16 inches. Major axis A will be equals 47.6 inches. Velocity in the duct. Velocity in duct can be expressed as V equals Q slash A. Where? V equals air velocity in feet per minute, FPM. Q equals air flow through duct in cubic feet per minute, CFM. A equals cross section of duct in square feet, SQ. Foot. Friction loss is estimated from the duct friction charts for a given air flow rate and velocity. Refer to the duct sizing section below for details. The table below summarizes the equivalent cross-sectional area approach. You can see the frictional loss increases with increasing velocity and lower cross-sectional area. In conclusion, one dot the equivalent diameter approach will retain the same pressure drop but will result in higher cross-sections of rectangular and oval ducts compared to round ducts. 2. Dot the equivalent area approach will increase the pressure drop of the duct run while keeping the cross-sectional area the same. Thanks for watching. Continue part 4.